Hello everyone, long time no see. It's, uh, <laughs> I took some time off from YouTube, my last video was in May, I believe. Um, yeah, it's been quite an interesting year, I'm not gonna talk about all that stuff going on, but, um, <laughs> what an interesting way to start off a new decade, you know? Um, but because of my last video, I talked about, um, some of the old Sega IPs that I wouldn't mind seeing returning, so I thought for a comeback video, so to speak, why not talk about their old rival Nintendo and some of their lesser known IPs or forgotten IPs, but these are ones that people don't really talk about much anymore, whether it's because people don't remember them or they just forgot they exist. Um, now, I'm not talking about, like, Metroid, Star Fox, Kid Icarus, Punch-Out, Golden Sun, because those aren't necessarily forgotten. They just kind of get slept on, and we know there's a new Metroid game coming, so... But, um, uh, let's talk about some of the other ones, so... Let's get the obvious one out of the way first. F-Zero. Now, um, F we haven't seen an F-Zero game in 15 years, at least. Um, what I love about the F-Zero games is because it's like... It's more like your traditional racing type of game, which... I'm not really a fan of those type of things. Like, you know, like... The old classics like Cruising USA and... Uh, Forza and... Uh, what the hell is the one on PS1? Uh, oh, what the hell is that one called? Oh. Gran Turismo. Um, yeah, I'm not really a fan of those types of ones, but I like the... These type of ones that are more like, where F Zero is more like a futuristic sci-fi type of th setting. You know, it's all kinds of crazy characters like humans, aliens, robots, cyborgs. Um, you know, and it's not like something like Mario Kart where you have weapons to shoot at each other. It's just you know head-on racing. You know, and of course you can ram each other and stuff. And it's a more challenging game. And you know, these games always had such awesome music. And the thing is. I don't have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which, um, I have Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U, um, you know, I'm not gonna get into all the whole thing with the ports and stuff, although I might make a video about that somewhere down the road, um, but, uh, when I played Mario Kart 8, and because there's, like, you know, Big Blue and Mute City on stuff on there, it's like, normally I'm not really a graphics hound or anything, but when I see the graphics for those levels on, like, on just the Wii U alone, or Mario Kart 8, I'm just like, Good God, they're gorgeous. Like, imagine if we saw a new F-Zero game like that. I, you know, you listen, Nintendo? Uh, while we're on the subject of racers, let's talk about another one. Stunt Racer FX. Now, this was a pretty interesting little racer. It's a... I don't think it particularly holds up well. Um, you know, not because of the whole FX thing. It's just a very... I don't know, it's hard to explain it, but I mean, I mean, I still love the original Star Fox, I still find that fun to play, even though the graphics are very dated, but the thing with this game, it's like, it's very clunky, I think is the word I'm looking for, like, it's, I, I don't know, it's like, the racing is kind of very, maybe it's the frame rate I'm thinking of, it's very, kind of, like, buggy or something, but, anyway, and what, uh, but this was still a pretty fun little game for back in the day, um, you know, it's like, you know, you have cars with faces on them, and then there's like, in the racetracks, you see, like, portraits of, like, Fox and, um, Kirby and stuff. Um, one thing I always thought was kind of odd was that because there are three racers, um, you have, like, the biggest one is strong and fast, and then the smallest one is slow and weak, which kind of seems a little weird for a racing game. Wouldn't the, smaller game, the smallest car be weak and fast, and then the big car would be slow and strong. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's another lesser known title that people don't really talk about much anymore. Well, this next one is... Well, there, those were, these were two of these games, and they were only in North America and Europe. They weren't in Japan. Um, I don't know if I just showed that. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, there was two of them. They were for the NES, and that was Star Tropics, or... In this case, the sequel, Star Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. Uh, now these are pretty much like the traditional top-down Legend of Zelda adventure type of game, and they're they're not bad. You know, it's more of like a unlike Zelda, which is like in a mythical type of thing. This is more like modern 
realistic, so to speak, type of thing, other than fighting monsters and using a hovercraft. But, um, yeah, but this, this is a good game, or, or good games, I should say. I haven't played the first one in years, but, you know, obviously the second one is good. Um, and you use, like, a baseball bat and yo-yos and stuff because it's, you know, realistic. Um, not, yeah, if you liked uh, Legend of Zelda, then you'd probably like... Uh, the Star Tropics games, and it's sad nobody really talks about these games anymore because they're actually really good games. Um, maybe because they're not, they were never in Japan or something, but that's beside the point. Uh, the next one, I, I don't really, I don't own any of these, um, any of the games, but, it, but let me start off by saying what it is. Custom Robo. I don't have any of the games, but um, I think I played a little bit of one of the GameCube ones, um, and it's, <laughs> looking back now, it's a series I kind of want to get into, but unfortunately the games are very expensive um, for, like, the DS and GameCube and stuff. But, um, yeah, that was originally a game that was only in Japan. And then there was, like, trophies of it in Smash Brothers Melee, and then it, they did start releasing them, like, you know, like I said, for the GameCube and DS and stuff, and it was became an international game. Um, but from what I can re rec recollect, I don't know if that's what I'm looking for or not, but... I don't know, they seem like fun games, and I would love to get into them, but like I said, they're, they're very expensive, and we don't see much of them anymore, you know, so... And there is... You can even make the... R... Oh, what the hell is his name? The MKR... Whatever the hell his name is. You can make one of them as a uh, me Fighter in Smash Brothers, so... Nintendo, why don't you make a new custom Robo game? Not that you're listening to this, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> now, here's one I've talked about on my channel a number of times, and uh, the, this one is kind of a stretch, and so is the, the last one, but that's beside the point. Um, nobody really talks about this game anymore, and that's a shame, because it's a great game. That's Geist. Now, this wasn't developed by Nintendo, but it was published by them. Now, Geist was a game that, um, it, it, it basically, I, you you're, you're I don't think there's a picture of one here, but you're a spirit, or you become a spirit, and then you possess people, objects, and even animals to, like, navigate through the game. It's a first-person perspective game, and it's a very good game, very underrated. You know, I would definitely consider this to be a hidden gem for the GameCube, and like I said, nobody really talks about it anymore. But, and the music is really good, the gameplay is very unique, I've never played anything else like it, other than Avenging Spirit for the Game Boy, which is kind of similar, but that's, that feels more like a Kirby type of game, almost, you know, it's, you know, this is more unique, as I said, um, I would love to see, like, an HD remaster of this, or maybe even a sequel, um, oh, another one I want to, before I get to the last one, another one I want to talk about real quick was the, the Game & Watch Gallery, now, of course, most people are familiar with the Game & Watch games, or, if you're not, you know, or, or at least know about Mr. Game & Watch from Smash Bros. But if you don't, Game & Watch was these little handheld... They were actually before my time, I'll admit that. There were these little handheld devices, kind of like Tiger Electronics. But I remember in the 90s, they actually put a bunch of them into a Game Boy cartridge. There was actually a few of them. I think there was three of these games, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I had the first one, which I got for Christmas in 98, I believe. But uh, it was four of the classic um, Game & Watch games, like, bundled into this cartridge. It was the Fire, or Fire Rescue, whatever, Oil Panic, the Octopus, and um, uh, the Manhole. And uh, there was two ways to play. It was the classic mode, but then there was the modern mode, which was, like, an updated version of the games, but with Mario characters. There was also a sequel. Um, I think there was I think there was at least three, like I said, so there was two sequels. The second one I have on my three D S virtual console. You know, so unfortunately I don't have the the first one, the physical version anymore. And I think there was also a third one, but I'm not I don't know about a fourth or not. Um, but that these were fun games. You know, it was because these were the t I mean the first one, I god, I played that for hours. It was the type of game that it's like there's no end goal or anything, it's more of like a arcade type of game. You just keep going and going and going to see how high a score you can get and you know, I wouldn't mind seeing those come back, or if, you know, maybe they could make, like, a collection or something, or, like, an updated version with, like, say, like, 20 of these games on it, so, and then it could be, like, they could make, like, three different modes, like, it could be the classic mode, and then there could be, like, the 90s mode, which was the modern 
Mario version that they used for the Game Boy ones. And then there could be, like, a new mode or something, like, which would be, like, an even more updated version. Just a thought, but I think that would be kind of cool to see, you know, something like that on the Switch. Now, the last one, this is even more of a stretch, because there was only a few of these games. Uh, this is the only one I own, the only one I ever played, and this wasn't made, developed, or published by Nintendo. It was actually, uh, well, anyways, it's Spectrobes. I forget who developed this. I think it was, like, some indie company or something, but it was actually published by Disney. And this was actually a pretty cool game. It was one of those collector types of games, and it worked perfectly with the DS because it used the stylus. Basically, um, if I can recall how this game... I haven't played this in years. I'm trying to recall what it was kind of about. Like, But there was this alien species that was like, taken over the galaxy that they kind of look like these faceless protoplasm-type creatures. So it's up to this kid named Ralan, who's on the cover right here, to find these ancient creatures called Spectrobes, which there's actually a couple of them on the cover here. Uh, it might be more of them in the instruction stuff, but basically, what it, what you, you go, you scour these planets to find these um, fossils. You dig up the fossils, which is like this little mini-game. It's actually, I always thought it was kind of fun, the way the, with the mini-game, you use all these delicate little tools and stuff. It was almost like that, what was that game, like Fossil Fighters? Kind of like that. But you have to awaken the fossils, which you can actually kind of see a picture of it on the back there. Right there. Um, but anyways, you awaken them. I mean, no, you dig them up, as well as minerals, which I'll get back to that in a moment. So you dig them up, and they're like these little creatures about the size of a cat, which you use them to like scan areas to find where there's fossils and stuff. So then you bring them back to your ship, and you awaken them. Um, which I think I already said that, but whatever. So they start off as, like, these little creatures and stuff, which are, like I said, just scan and stuff. But then you also put them into this little, like, like a little arena playpen type of thing. And then you feed them the minerals you find, which raise, like, their attack, health, and defense, stuff like that. Their, their stats, if you will. And uh, once their stats get high enough, you can basically evolve them so they become stronger into, like, bigger creatures. And then that's when you use them to battle, because... When you uh, battle, which is um, with these, I think they're called krill or something like that, these alien things. But um, when you battle them, it, it's almost like an action RPG thing. And it's not bad, actually. It, I mean, <laughs> I, I haven't played this in years, like I said, so maybe it is bad. I don't know. But um, still, it was a pretty fun game, you know, this series. And, you know, nobody really talks about it anymore. Um, it was also one for the Wii, which I did own because I got it from a... Uh, a closing blockbuster. Um, I never played it though, but yeah, this was the only one I played, and it was actually one of the first DS games I bought. And it's a shame that nobody really talks about it anymore because it was a fun game series. I wouldn't mind seeing like a new one, you know, see that series make a comeback. So, but uh, that's it for uh, this video. I'm probably gonna do a new game pickups video next week since it's been a while. But until then, what are some other forgotten Nintendo IPs? Like, is there any I might have? missed out that maybe some of you guys remember let me know in the comments section below and as always thanks for watching i'll see you next time guys